إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying him and asking him to protect us from the evil of ourselves and the sins that we commit. Indeed, whosoever Allah guides, no one can lead astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguidance, and every misguidance will be in hellfire. Amma ba'd, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, commanding the believers, commanding everyone who would listen, He says, rush and hasten, race towards a forgiveness from your Rabb and to paradise. A paradise the width of is like the heavens and the earth. So Allah has made it here actually an obligation on humanity in general and on the believers in particular because those are the ones who will respond to not only seek but rush towards the forgiveness of Allah and to His Jannah. And he combined them both together, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you do not enter Jannah unless you attain the forgiveness of Allah. Without this, there is no that. And when we're talking about istighfar, some people think that this is for somebody else. That istighfar is occasional. Istighfar is the exception. Only when I commit a mistake, I will do istighfar. And only when my mistake is big, I will commit myself to istighfar. But then I don't need it otherwise. But rather, a second look at what istighfar is and what it means, and the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that istighfar is the beginning, but istighfar is also the end. Istighfar is for the sinner, but istighfar is also for the pious. Istighfar is your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your and my ability to overcome my weakness and your weakness. Because every single human being is weak. Every single human being is going to commit mistakes day and night. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and this is through a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam narrated, Hadith Qudusi. يَا عِبَادِ إِنَّكُمْ تُخْطِئُونَ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَأَنَا أَخْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِي أَخْفِرْ لَكُمْ He says, O oh my slave, you commit sins, you sin day and night. And I forgive all sins, so ask me for forgiveness and I will grant it to you. Part of the animosity, the hatred between the shaytan and the children of Adam is an oath at the beginning the Fajr Shaytan has made. And to answer that, an oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has made. The Shaytan said, وَعِزَّتِكَ لَا أُبْرِحُ أُغْوِيهِمْ أَوْ لَا أَزَالُ أُغْوِيهِمْ مَا دَامَتْ أَرْوَحُهُمْ فِي أَجْسَادِهِمْ He says, I swear by your majesty, by your strength, by your izzah, I'll continue to tempt them and take them away from you as long as their souls are inside their bodies. As long as they are breathing, I'm on them, I'm after them, I'm tempting them. I'll beautify the haram for them. I'm going to still continue to be after them until they die, until the last breath. But then Allah Azza wa Jal 
said, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَا أَزَالُ أَخْفِرُ لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَغْفَرُونِي It says, by my honor, by my izza, by my might and majesty, I'll continue to forgive them as long as they ask me for forgiveness. So there is this relentless effort from the shaitan coupled with our own weakness. But there is also this promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as long as you knock on his door and ask Allah to forgive, that Allah will continue to forgive. Who is forgiveness for? It is for all of us and we need it all every single second and minute in our lives. Because when you think about it, there is no day, there is no ta- night without us committing something that upsets Allah Azza wa Jal, whether it's small or big. It is for those who say, I feel alienated. I want to bring myself closer to Islam, but my heart is not responding. It doesn't want to come back. It is for those of us who say, I'm almost, I have almost despaired of myself walking the righteous path, coming back to Allah, because it's so rebellious and I'm so addicted to sin that I've given up on myself. I don't think I can be a good Muslim ever. So if you are about to give up on yourself, or you feel alienated and distant, if you say, I used to be good, I used to pray on time. I used to come to the masjid. I used to avert my gaze. I used to stay from the haram, but now I don't pray. I used to put the hijab on, but now I take it off. It's only an occasional wearing of the hijab, or the hijab that I now put now on is less serious than the way that I used to put it on before. I used to be better, and I want to be better. I want to come back, but I just don't simply know how to come back. The temptations are too strong. My heart does not desire it. The desire is not strong enough. How do I begin? They say you begin by asking Allah for forgiveness. Because when the obstacle is within us, the obstacle is in our heart, the obstacle is the weakness that we have. How do I bring strength back to my heart? How do I remove that alienation? How do I take that weight away? When the heart is suffering and it's weak, the thing that will revive it is istighfar. Because the thing that weighs it down is our sins. There are these black dots that continuously contaminate our souls and our hearts. If I want to chase despair away and again believe that Allah will receive me and forgive me, Istighfar is the path because Allah had promised that He is going to forgive those sins. If you commit a su or you wrong yourself, that is, if you commit a sin between you and Allah, this is the lul when you wrong yourself. Or you commit a su between you and humanity, you take someone's rights. Or it is you and Allah Azza wa Jal alone. But then, no matter what that sin is, you ask Allah for forgiveness, you surely will find Allah forgiving. Those who when they commit an obscenity, a grave big sin, or they wrong themselves in whatever type of sin it may be, then they'll remember Allah. And when they remember Allah, the attitude should be that when I've committed something wrong and I remember Allah, I'll ask for forgiveness immediately and I never delay it. I do not wait. Rasulullah said in the hadith, he says, when a mu'min, a believer, a Muslim commits a sin, أَمْسَكَ صَاحِبُ الشِّمَالِ He says, the angel on the left, he will not write it down. And he will wait for six hours. Six hours does not mean the six hours that we have today for, but a period of time. It could be equal to six hours or it could be less than that, but a period of time. To see whether he's going to ask for forgiveness or not. And if he asks, he doesn't write it down. If he forgets, it is written. So Allah has granted every believer that chance that once you commit a sin, 
Here is this grace period. Are you going to ask Allah for forgiveness? Allah, they remember Allah immediately. So they ask Allah. And Allah says, Who forgives sins but Allah? Because when you think about it, if I have a sin, if I committed an injustice, I can travel this entire earth, but I will not find someone to take it away except Allah Azza wa Jal. I can go to the one who I've wronged and they can forgive me, but still I owe something to Allah. And if Allah will not gonna accept it, no one else will accept it. No one else will take it away. And Allah's forgiveness is vast and better and more comprehensive than the forgiveness of humanity. Because it does not matter what you do, Allah will forgive it. And you cannot say the same thing about another human being. Every human being has a limit. Even your parents, they have limits. And there could be something that you do that will upset another human being and they say, I can never forget this. And I can never forgive this. Except Rabbul Alameen. And as long as you are alive, you can do whatever. Shirk included. But you ask Allah for forgiveness and you repent and Allah will take that sin away from you. Who forgives it but Allah? And that is also to explain and give hope to the hopeless. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith that Allah azza wa jal said, He says, O child of Adam, if your sins, if your sins were to reach the sky, the clouds, fill this earth up all the way to the sky. But then you ask me for forgiveness, I'll forgive you and I do not care. He says, O child of Adam, if you were to come to me, will come to me on the day of judgment, what do you come with? The earth's fill of injustice and sin. All of it. Imagine how much that would be. Remember this hadith, if you ever say to yourself or the shaitan ever whispers to you that, Allah cannot forgive you. He says, if you bring all of this, ثُمَّ لَقِيتَنِي You arrive. لَا تُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا Not associating partners with me, not committing shirk. غَفَرْتُ لَكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي I will forgive you and I do not care. So in the ayah, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Who forgives sins but Allah? Who can forgive this but Allah? Who can forgive anything like this but Allah Azza wa Jalla? But then Allah continues, وَلَمْ يُصِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ they do not insist, persist in disobedience and sin while knowing that it is a sin. That is, once they know it's haram, they detach. Once they remember, they detach. They stop and they ask Allah for forgiveness. To those, Allah says, their recompense, أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً Then those will receive forgiveness from Allah Azza wa in heaven. That is the path to the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is the path back to your heart. That is the path back to Islam, to your hijab, to your salah, to everything. A simple saying, Astaghfirullah. But also, if we have complications in our lives, if we have problems that we're trying to overcome, if one of those days we wake up and we feel tightness in our chest, Obstacles in our path, confusion in our way. If we want to attain something that is halal, but we cannot, and it's complicated and it's blocked. If we're going through problems and trouble, or we're being afflicted. If we're actually experiencing, whether as individuals or as an ummah, a punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. What is the way into ease? What is the way to lift all of this and take it away? It is istighfar. And that is something that we forget. When I'm having an argument with someone or at home and the, uh, the atmosphere at home is unpleasant, when my day is not going right, when everything is 
is, is complicated and I'm only facing more and more complications in my life when the path of ease is not available but the path of difficulty seems to be my path. I forget to ask Allah for forgiveness. You say, why should I do this? It's because the sins that we commit chain us and pollute us and poison our relationships and homes. You want to remove all of that, ask Allah Azza wa for forgiveness. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ He says, Allah Azza wa says in the Qur'an, Allah was not going to punish them while you are among them. That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is safety from punishment. If he's in a place, not going to be punished. Now, the, now that he's gone, what is the remaining safety? What's the thing that removes and chases the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jalla away? And Allah, Allah continues in the ayah, Allah was not going to punish them as long as they're asking for forgiveness. As long as they're continuously asking for forgiveness, the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal does not come to an individual or a community or to an ummah. And if someone is experiencing it, the fastest way out of it is to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness, to take these sins away, to bring our hearts back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone is deficient in rizq, there's deficiency in, in progeny, there's deficiency in happiness and in harmony. Allah Azza wa also prescribes istighfar for that. Istighfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara yursil samaa alaykum midrara wa yumdidkum bi amwali wa baneen. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and this is Nuh alayhi salam, and similarly also Hud alayhi salam. Yursil al-sama'a alaykum midrara wa yazidkum quwwatan ila quwwatikum. That is when you engage in istighfar, Allah will send the sky pouring upon you. That is Allah will bless you with rain. This is a blessing that will surround you. But also within yourself, yazidkum quwwatan ila quwwatikum. He will give you strength on top of the strength that you have. So will bless you here internally, in your body, and around you. Allah will bless the earth around you. Allah will give you children when you don't have them. Allah will bless the wealth that you have. Why? Because Allah wants to bless you. Again, what's the thing that is stopping it? It is our distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the sins that we commit, and they take the barakah away. And that is why Al Hassan al Basri famously, when he was sitting and was being asked, and people are coming to him, and someone says, There is famine in our area, what do I do? He says, Istaghfirullah. Another person says, I'm having difficulty conceiving, having children, what do I do? He says, Astaghfirullah. Another person, he succumbs and says, I have another problem, what do I do? He says, Istighfar. So the person inquired, tried, sitting right next to him, observing that it was the same answer for all of this. He says, you're giving the same answer. He says, don't you know what Allah has said in the Qur'an, the ayahs that I just quoted to you, that when you engage in istighfar, Allah does bless you and give you and take relief, the pain that you're in. So sometimes you find yourself in a very foul mood. Sometimes there's an argument between you and your spouse. Sometimes you're working and it's not going well. You're studying and it's not going well. Pause, stop, and engage in istighfar and keep doing it. And make it a habit. And bi idnillah, that will improve. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfirullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Yes, istighfar is for us when we commit a mistake and our heart is not going to be conscious enough of these mistakes as long as it is drowning in them It's not going to notice these mistakes if it's not alive. 
And the way to bring life back to it is with istighfar itself. And then you will begin to notice even the small mistakes that you do. And then you'll begin to notice even when your heart starts straying and forgetting. And you, so you will engage in istighfar not simply because you've committed a mistake, but you want to preserve your heart. And you will note also even after you commit a ta'ah, after actually you've worshipped Allah, that if your heart was not present, that it, you did not worship Allah the way that He deserves to be worshipped, that you will also engage in istighfar to complement your ibadah and ask Allah to cover up its deficiencies and accept it. That is why part of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you pray and you finish your salah, you engage in istighfar. Right after you finished your salah. What for? Did I commit a sin? But you want Allah to accept it and to cover up whatever was missed in it. So you engage in istighfar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, part of his sunnah was that in a setting when he sits with his companions, before he leaves, they would count for him at least 70 and in some narrations, a hundred of astaghfirullah. Like why would Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam engage in so much istighfar daily? The sunnah of Rasulullah is not just simply externally looking a certain way. That, yes, but plus the content of his sunnah. Why istighfar so much, a hundred times, just in one hour or so? A hundred times of istighfar. Why? The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, I notice a very thin veil surrounding my heart and I want to remove it. It's not the veil that surrounds our heart. Our hearts are covered. Our hearts are forgetful. But his heart ﷺ is so close to the Almighty, to the All-Merciful, that he does not even want the slightest of distractions. So he says, how do I remove these distractions? When I go and talk to my wife, I talk to my kids, I start working, the heart is going to be distracted. When I sell and when I buy, the heart is going to be distracted. When I start even sometimes unintentionally glance at something that is haram, it's going to affect my heart. How do I bring strength back to it? It's by istighfar, by taking time for it. And if Rasulullah wasallam engaged in so much istighfar, how much more us once... Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were eager to learn things that benefit them. He says, Ya Rasulullah, alimni dua an ad'u bihi fi salati. He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, teach me something I could say, dua I could say in my salah. What does he teach him? He's teaching Abu Bakr, the best of this ummah after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Say, Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi zulman kathira, wa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant, faghfir li maghfiratan min indika warhamni innaka anta al-ghafuru rahim Say, Ya Abu Bakr, imagine, who is he talking to? Abu Bakr, say, Ya Allah, I've wronged myself immensely. And no one forgives sins but you. So forgive me a forgiveness from you and have mercy upon me. You're the one who is forgiving and merciful. That is a dua in the salah. You can say it in your sujood, you can say it after your tashahud before your salam. But that is a dua from Rasulullah to Abu Bakr to tell you that it's not simply for the sinners, it's simply also for the pious and the righteous who want to be close to Allah Azza wa Jal, who want to keep their hearts alive. Of the dua or of the istighfar that is recommended, you can just simply say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You can say, Astaghfirullah, Alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, if a person says this and it's accepted from him, his sins all will be forgiven. That also could be a form that you can use. Sayyidu al-istighfar, Allahumma anta khalaqtani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'at ila akhir al-hadith. There is a dua or there's a dhikr that is called the best of istighfar. Ya Allah, you created me and I'm your slave. And it continues till the end. And in that dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, and it's available in 
the books of dhikr and the books of dua. There you admit Allah's bounties upon you and you admit your shortcomings and you admit that Allah Azza wa is the only one who can forgive. Abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhanbi. I confess that you are the one who has given me, that you are the one who had blessed me. All the blessings that I have are from you, but I've returned and I disobeyed. Faghfir li. So forgive me, because no one can forgive except you, Ya Allah. And also the best of the best times to ask Allah for forgiveness. And there is no time when it's not a good time to ask Allah for forgiveness. You can ask it in your salah, after your salah, as you're walking, as you're coming, as you're lying in bed, as you're trying to go to sleep. When you wake up, you can do it consistently, almost all the time. On but one of the best times to do it, the last third of the night. When the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah, he says, Allah descends in a way that befits His majesty. And Allah says, هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرُ لَهُ Is there someone asking for forgiveness so that I can forgive them? So forgiveness, asking for forgiveness is a remedy for everything. It's a remedy and the best of remedies to take us from the swamp of sin into the light of Allah Azza wa Jal, from hellfire into heaven. It is a thing that can fix our lives, can bring us back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, can deal with our problems, and most importantly in dealing with these problems, revive our heart. So that iman is easy, Quran is easy, hijab is easy, and so that we are protected from fitna. And when we hear the truth, we accept it. A lot of times the problem is that not that we do not know. We know. Alhamdulillah, some of us, we know a lot. But the heart is, is irresponsive. How will it respond if it's not alive? So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from Al-Mustaghfirun. Ya make us, Ya Rabb al of those who ask you for forgiveness frequently, consistently. And we ask you for forgiveness, that you would accept that dua from us. Make us, Ya Rabb al of those who remember you often and bring life back to our hearts. We ask you that, Ya Rabb al to protect us from the consequences of our sins. We ask you to accept the good deeds that we have done. We ask you that you bring us back to your faith, bring us back to salah, bring us back to taqwa. We ask you, Ya Rabb al to make us of the soft-hearted who when they hear your reminders, they accept them. When they hear about heaven, they rush to it. When they hear about hellfire, they flee from it. We ask you, Ya Arham al to make the hereafter the most important thing in our life and the greatest pursuit that we have. Do not make us this, this dunya. Do not make... The, the most important and the major concern that we have is this world, but make it the hereafter. We ask you that you put barakah in us and in our children, in our spouses, in our community, and in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma nasaluka al-jannata wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-nari wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. ونسألك من خير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم اجعلنا من المستغفرين كثيرا والمستغفرات واغفر لنا ذنوبنا أجمعين وارزقنا توبة نصوحا رب العالمين اللهم ذكرنا ولا تجعلنا من الغافلين واجعلنا من المؤمنين المحسنين رب العالمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وأقيم الصلاة